All right, guys, welcome to Construction Cronies. My name is Chris Conco. Today, I'm going to be teaching you guys a lot about metal stud framing. This is a heavy gauge wall. This is 14 gauge. So we're pre-drilling the bottom track to get the pin bolts in here. Um, but I want you guys first just to really pay attention in this video. There's a lot of detail going on. I'm going to probably get do a voiceover for most of it. So I'm going to be explaining a lot of things. If you guys have any questions at all, be sure to leave them down below in the comments because you guys know I always get back to you. Okay, so yeah, we're right now, like I said before, we're pre-drilling the bottom track so that we can pin bolt it in. Uh, it's a, like 14 gauge, 16 gauge, you probably always want to um, uh, pre-drill the bottom track because the hammer drill bit will not go through that type of steel. It's just too heavy. So I go every two feet uh, in the middle of the track, or you can stagger them or whatnot, but because this is on CMU, concrete filled CMU, which is concrete masonry unit, uh, those are the pin bolts right there, by the way, um, and the red shots, and the, I'll explain something too about that. But anyway, so this is concrete filled CMU, right? So we are gonna be uh, drilling down the middles in this one, right? So you'll see here that in a second too. The the red shots um, are were too strong for this actually, but you it's good to have them just in case because 14 gauge is pretty heavy heavy duty, right? Uh, those are the pins that I put in my DX351 to s fasten the top track, the slip track to the uh, I-beam above. And these are the yellow shots. This is These are the shots that I actually used for this entire job uh, were the yellows. So the reds were just too much. Um, the nice thing, these are number 10 wafer heads, okay? So the number eights are what we usually use. So these number 10s are bigger, right? They're a real pain in the butt. Uh, in fact, you have to pre-drill um, uh, part of your stud at the. T you have to pre-drill the top just to just to s get them in, right? I'll, which I'll be showing you guys later. Chop saw blades, uh, standard chop saw. Uh, you won't be able to cut any of this by hand, obviously. So a chop saw and a grinder. There's the chop saw will be uh, very necessary. I like to use two pin lasers uh, on this type of wall, and I'll show you how I use that throughout this video as well. There's a line laser too, um, which we have used in the past, but uh, I got now I have two pin lasers, so I'm using those. Right now we're scarifying the CMU. So the CMU is the gray uh, block, right? It's concrete masonry unit, and then it's concrete filled. So we're just making it flat because the, especially with the heavy gauge, it doesn't bend or, or you know, it doesn't play nice with bumps. Uh, we're doing our layout. I'm gonna show you that as well here. Just give me a second, but uh, chalk your lines. Uh, we're always using black chalk if we can um, on this. It's, it, anyways, uh, it's just, it, you can see it really well. Um, I would say, I think it's in a five, a number five, so in uh, readability or the, you know, the thickness or whatnot. Um, I can't believe that, that that's just uh, evading me. So these are 10 inch columns and we're framing to center of column, which is v very, very, very common. Okay. Uh, the, 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 the bottom track is six and an eighth, right? Just a little bit bigger. So I, I always put my tape at the one, right? And I'm going to go three and a sixteenth over on either right to the front of the track. And that's where I'm going to make my mark. Uh, some of them are round. So you just put a square on it, right? They have round corners. So if you use your uh, speed square or something, you could just uh, butt into that. I'm marking five inches to center, right? And then I'm coming uh, forward three and a sixteenth to make it six and an eighth overall, right? So that's that three and a sixteenth right there is, is where we'll be putting our track. And uh, this is our, obviously our marks for chalking our line, right? So this is completely unscripted guys. So uh, please bear with me. And like I said, if you guys have any questions, just leave them down below. This was, uh, this whole framing job took us 12 hours to do, uh, 130 feet long. Um, it's overall 35 feet high, this wall, but there's eight feet of uh, concrete on the bottom and uh, two foot beam at top, right? So stick to the end of the video and I'm, I'm even gonna be showing you guys how we build the bulkheads for the beams to maintain your deflection, right? So that's a very important, and that'll be at the very end of the video. The last thing is the bulkhead. So I'll be showing you that as well. I uh, guess there's lots of stuff going on here, guys. I just wanna hope, uh, wish everyone's well and Everyone's, you know, working and being safe. Uh, it, it's so it's good to work in pairs. It's uh, definitely going to go quick. I like the three-man crew. Uh, it's perfect number. Uh, this is the hammer drill, right? It's a quarter-inch bit. Uh, I use the Hilti bits, the quarter-inch, and the same with the pin bolts, quarter-inch. They they'll go in. So obviously, you pin one end, 
right? And on this super heavy duty gauge, it'll never bend in the middle. So you go right to the other side, okay? So basically anything that's not light gauge, you can do this, right? You can pin either end of it down. Uh, and, and But if it's light gauge, you wanna go end, middle, end, right? Because light gauge can, uh, can bend in the middle, right? You don't want that. Um, so yeah, I wait till he's uh, he's done hammering in the first pin, and I'll draw. I'll go and ha I'll drill the next, the the other end, right? And then uh, Aaron's gonna go put the pin in that end, and when he's done that, I'll go ahead and pre-drill these holes, and he'll come behind uh, hammering in the pins, right? Uh, you gotta think about it like an assembly line, right? Then throughout this video, there might be a lot of details you you can pick up on that I might forget to explain, uh, because it's just like I've done this for so long, it just comes naturally to me, really. But it, it is like a, an assembly line, right? You gotta think of yourself as a machine or a robot, right, for maximum efficiency. Uh, that's Drywall, steel stud, construction in general is like that, right? Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's very heavy duty stuff, man. Uh, this is a unique wall. I I don't remember ever uh, building one this heavy duty, uh, especially eight feet off the ground on concrete masonry unit, right? So I have done walls before like this on top of CMU, but uh, like very few, but this could this this could be a new thing. I don't know, guys. So, uh, but or it could be a common thing in your area. I don't know. But this is going to be a great lesson. So e even if this was on the floor, you'd still do the same stuff. Okay, just so you know, like uh, you might. The only difference is you you might want to stagger your uh, pin bolts and maybe add a couple more. You know, like stagger them from front to back of the track type thing. Uh, your layout. Do your layout every time you lay a pin a track. So your efficiency has to start with uh, your lift placement, right? So you want to do it, all the work that you possibly can in that area uh, before you move, right? So, um, yep, every 16 inches on this wall. Uh, it, there's three bays in, in this on this wall in total. So I basically treat each one as its own wall, right? It goes 16 inches off the beam. <laughs> If you're lucky enough, the beam is level, and you can put your sheets right on it and start off of it, right? So, which we did. Um, you need to stagger your sh your joints on either end of the of this wall. Okay, so two pin lasers. You'll be seeing you'll be seeing more of that. But those hundred meter tapes there are are the best for doing high walls. Uh, you get quick, accurate numbers. You just need to have a guy at the bottom holding it on the center, right? Um, I check the end of every ten foot section that I put on. I check a height and then I write down the measurement. Okay, so I, I, every time I'm at a column, I'll check the height there, I'll, and I'll also check the ends of every 10-foot uh, section of track I put on. And if the number is way different, then I will measure in the middle. But if it's similar, then I'll be like, cool, I'll write it down, and we'll just carry on. Most walls, like a lot of walls, can be cut all the same size. Um, and, and some walls are, like, you know, like, they go down in even increments. It's uh, pretty. It's pretty. You know, some some are sloped. You literally have to measure every single uh, stud. So you can see there, my first attempt, I was using the red strip too high, blew the tops off. Uh, the 351 was cranked all the way down. But uh, putting a one pin every foot. Okay, one pin every foot because uh, and that's a full strip. Okay, so ten shots in every. Uh, every 10 foot section of track. Okay, so I'm putting a shot in every foot. So the first, the first laser is going to be on the end, right? Um, and I'm using my square to make the mark because it's going to be too far out because of the clip. Like you'll see at the iron at the top, you know, uh, the the top track doesn't go all the way to the column, right? Because there's always that little bit of a plate you can see at the top there where the bolts are, right? So the the track starts in. Uh, same thing here. I'm plumbing up uh, the first center. Uh, in this in this wall, uh, and I have a I have um, a little trick that I'm going to show you here as well uh, for pinning up the track and um, and and plumbing up your se uh, centers at the same time. So and there you go. I, I tape I always clip mine at the 16 inch if I can. Uh, it's just more accurate, and I'll go I'll mark that end as well because that's a, that's going to be a center there. But then yeah, 16, 32, 48. Okay, and um, it's just uh, simple as that. Every time you put a piece of track on, do your layout, so you don't have to come back and do it. Okay, so so do your layout and uh, measure your height as well. See, there you go. That this is actually a measuring with my tape measure. It's definitely not as effective. Um, I wanted to kind of demonstrate that, but because uh, yeah, it's just the the 100 meter tape is nice for high walls. The, we'd even tried the laser distance finder, but. 
you have to be a little you have to be square you know it's not perfect right unless it's self-leveling uh clamps yeah so clamping on the beams uh you want to split the beam okay and um i like these uh the these nine nine ninety r clamps i believe they are uh i'll leave a link down below for them as well so i'm um, plumbing up just the just the far end of the top track okay and i'm and i'm using the last 16 um on that 10 foot section so right there i'm plumbing up the 16 and i'm plumbing up the track okay so it's perfect i don't need two lasers anymore only for the first piece in the wall and then after that i can just butt the one end into the track that's already shot in and um and then yeah laser up the other end with the with the laser okay um and it's also like i said plumbing up the center for the 16 right for the stud splitting the beam right you want to split your beam with you'll notice with with slip track and different types of track you got to be you got to be you know you'll you have to be the judge okay sometimes you want the the beam to be a little more inside okay because it's wider than the the bottom track okay so you just just know your steel and uh split your beam you'll be good you'll be in there um and, and then just keep it consistent right so if if you um whatever you use to like you know your distance on that split okay just keep it consistent through the whole entire wall that you're building but yeah you can see uh the red is uh red is nice actually uh you can see it outside and the green is kind of but nice for inside but um uh pin lasers like you can do like i like I like doing it uh, with the pin lasers. I'm getting back into it. I was doing everything with line lasers for a while there, right? But uh, um, now that uh, we're doing exterior again, I went and bought another pin laser finally, and um, back to the the pin lasers. So, um, yeah, Aaron is uh, new on the lift here, so he's he's uh, you know you got to be gentle with got new guys on the lifts until they get their you know bearings and whatnot, right? So I can you see there I got one shot left. So I'm like, okay, where did I miss? You know, where did I miss? I find it and I shoot it. But, um, yeah, man. I get, You could also be lower a little bit on the lift, too. And um, that would be, you know. And Aaron's much taller than I am, too, right? So, <laughs> but there you go. You see, uh, he's uh, already drawing the centers. And it's simple, right? You just clip uh, on the, the last track, the last center that you put, right? You just clip onto that and uh, keep drawing your centers and then here I, oh, I this is why i like to do this guys this is this is i'm going to show you right here so right away here i can tell that the the center's off okay there's something wrong with it and uh, because i checked the i checked that's what i used the pin laser to check it right because you don't really you don't need to plumb up every track of center okay you can do one every 30 feet okay but i do this as a check in case something happened with the tape got pulled or whatever and it in case it did in this case it actually did so uh, i went back and i fixed the centers and and i just basically use that as a as a check that's all it really is okay um you don't need to plumb up uh, a stud every 10 feet okay you like every bay here is i think 40 feet these bays um so you can do one at the beginning of each one of these okay uh but even over 40 feet you can you can lose your centers right so i want to i like to check you know so that nothing i don't have to go back and fix anything after right might as well there's always a center close enough to the end of the end of the track there you go see that laser that bosch one was inside the column there and that's because of the plate and the bolts at the top and then on the other end yep i'm already plumbing up a center right there okay at the at the end of the track and this is my first piece in this bay so that is going to be what i'm going to use for my centers is that first line okay uh air in there with the square again okay we're 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 marking the stud the the level line or the plumb line sorry for the the stud that shot into the column here um but yeah so that you can see the bolts up there here, I'm always adjusting to make sure that uh, my clamp is going to clip onto the beam or whatever it is you're clamping to properly, all right, before you get the, sh the, the piece of material up there, okay? So, um, but yeah, you can see the, the top of the columns always have that plate, right, for bolting to the beams, and that's why the, the top track always starts in a few inches, so... Um, but yeah, this this beam is very like far like big compared to the track. Uh, you don't normally get them like you know this crazy. Um, but yeah, like it's very difficult to clamp, uh, being so far out like the you know so much bigger than the actual track. So, uh, but it, it 
it, it, it's kind of interesting the bulkhead too there the though like what we did for that so make sure you guys stick to the end of the video i'm going to show you how we did the the bulkhead around this uh i beam here and uh, to um uh, keep the maintain the deflection in the wall, right? So it, you basically you can't attach the bulkhead to the wall. So what do you do, right? So I'm going to show you that in this video. Yep, uh, like I said, just splitting a beam, just split the beam all the time. And uh, if you, once you got it clamped in, you can use a hammer just to bang it into into um, into level, you know, and into the laser line if you want, right? Uh, hammers are good. Hammers are good. But um, yeah, like you can see how far in that is, right? It's crazy down, right? I've, as have any of you guys ever built a uh, 14 gauge steel stud wall? Let me know down below in the comments. And then yeah, here we go. Boom, one in the ends, right? You always shoot one in the ends and then go every foot. Okay, you wanna go every foot. I'm going into more detail how I in, in, shot, uh, installed the uh, top track in this video because uh, you guys have been asking a lot about that i guess i kind of maybe skimmed over it in my last uh framing videos so um yeah every foot guys every foot and i'm like i said i'm going you gotta you can't shoot right in the middle of the i-beam because it's really thick and you can blow your tops but um yeah try to you know try to put your shots in the right spot closer to the lip it, it is the weaker the beam is and then, yeah, so I'm writing down the measurements every 10 feet, okay? And you can see that it's not that much different, right? So I think this wall here was went down like a quarter inch every, like, six studs or something like that, it, you know? So um, so there we go. Lamb's getting them ready. Uh, this is the first stud that goes into the column. So you're going to shoot it. You're going to put sh uh, shots every two feet. But, yeah, watch this time lapse. And um, this is how we pass them up we went stud by stud right so i'm going up uh i'm too low at this point here but watch once we get into the groove here i go down about halfway and then uh aaron pushes up the stud and you know we both work to pull it up together and then i have to go up a little bit to the top of stud uh i go forward and he comes into into the bottom track right we have to angle the stud to get it into the track right so i'm going to go forward and aaron's going to go in to get that stud and we work in pairs uh, i always um uh, you know, put enough studs in so that I can go all the way to the top, right? For however many, however long my lift is, okay? I put in the, the amount of studs that it, you know, for as it takes to, for how wide my lift is, basically, right? So I can go up and I screw all the uh, top. Uh, the t I screw the studs in at the top track, right? Uh, and in this case, I'm actually pre-drilling them first. And then you can see I'm loading channel, right? I go over this more too in this video, but I'm loading channel as I go, right? And I'm pulling it um, with me, okay? So when I'm done the wall, I can go back and snap it all in, okay? Which you'll see, okay? Here we found that uh, the studs were not the right size so uh you know sometimes this happens where the like i i it was my actual fault i wrote down an inch bigger than it was by accident <laughs> right so but yeah the, the studs here are 70 pounds each okay these studs are 70 pounds each we're like you know they're almost 24 feet high or long sorry and uh yeah they're they weigh 70 pounds a piece they're big bulky it, it's it's crazy you have to have gloves up with these okay you absolutely ha must have gloves so when you're putting your last couple studs in just keep like the last second last one in like tighter to the to the previous stud so that you have room just keep yourself room to get the last stud in right um uh, because it can get tight you need to angle them right to get them in so and then you can hear see i'm this is what i'm doing i'm going back and i'm snapping all the track in now it, i had I had it pulled all the way through with me okay and i'm and i was installing it uh while i had space right so for the first 12 feet of stud i put in i put in two pieces of channel okay when i move over in the next 12 feet i pull that second channel uh through with me and then i stick in another channel right and then you just you know what i mean and you keep repeating that process all the way to the end of the wall um, but yeah, here, uh, like I was saying, all the columns get studs shot to them. So e e both sides of the column, you're going to shoot studs every two feet and at the top and bottom. Uh, but yeah, you got to, like I was saying here, we're, now we're getting into the flow. You can see how I'm, I'm coming down. Aaron's pushing up the stud, right? Uh, the, he the, went and got me channel there. Here I'm loading channel every four feet. Right, you want to load your channel every four feet. I'm putting I'm putting two sticks in uh, at, at every four feet right now, and I'll pull one through on the next twelve feet and put another stick in type thing. You'll see. And then the end cut, I'll measure the end cut 
before we're at the end, right? So you can see here, okay, I'm about to finish this next section, right? Then I go up and I, and I square them all in, which I'm gonna show you in, in more detail. We just wait after this time lapse, guys, I'm gonna be showing you what I'm doing up there. And I also have more video coming of what Aaron does and stuff like that. So um, yeah, see, I'm pulling through the 12 foot channel and I'm putting in another one, right? So uh, for the next section. And uh, that way I can I can measure, I can throw my tape, right? And uh, measure, and I don't have to come back, right? The, you don't want to be going back uh, to, you know, back and forth, right? You, especially not on a lift, okay? You got to think ahead and you got to plan ahead. Um, and yeah, just make it easier for yourself, right? You don't, you don't want to be going back and forth, back and forth doing work, okay? You need to know what you need ahead of time, right? Um, it's just for maximum efficiency, okay? We're peace workers, right? So we don't mess around. Um, and we're all, we're, and you know, like we're, I want to, like, I, 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 like, we're all pretty much journeymen, right? Uh, we, we're just not all, like, uh, journeymen in ISM. Like, I'm the only ISM journeyman, but Lam and Aaron are both journeymen um, with other things, okay? So, uh, but yeah, here you go. See how I put that stud close into the last one so I can get the end stud in? And also, too, at that far end, you want to make sure you shoot in your column stud before you uh, put in the studs and you can't get your shotgun in there as well, right? So, uh, you got to get, you got to, uh, get that in before you put in the last couple of studs on your wall and there yeah see i'm just pulling it through and snapping it back right and this is what i mean and now now i can just go back and uh, snap it all in and see how i'm going back and then up back and up so yeah you don't want to go you know you don't want to chase one whole run and then go up and then go back you want to go up and snap it all in it's just the quickest way to do it but yeah, look how mint that is, right? It's mint. It's perfectly uh, plumb, level, everything square. You can tell just by looking at it. You know, it's beauty. And the channel, every four feet. Yeah, it's an absolutely uh, incredible um, wall. Like, I, I, the engineer way over it. it. Uh, we could have got, we could have went 20 gauge with a structural flange on this, no problem. Uh, 14 gauge with this structural flange, like this is crazy. The flange in, on this stud is two and five eighths wide. That's insane, right? Like it's crazy. So yeah, that this is this worked out to be a good system, guys. Um, on concrete, right? Um, on on. Uh, on dirt or whatever like there are other ways to do this okay like if you if you can't slide the stud up all you're gonna do is you're gonna put it horizontal on the on the lift okay on the cage on the top of the cage you're gonna go up halfway okay and then you're gonna swing it around and the guy at the bottom is gonna catch it and put it in the bottom track and you're gonna put it in the top track okay so you can put you know three four studs on a lift here I'm modifying this stud I had to cut around the top angle, so I, I have a grinder with me. I don't send the stud down. I just we just bring it out. I clamp the stud to my lift cage, I bust out the grinder, and make the cut that I need, and then boom, it's in, and we're shooting it. Uh, but yeah, so like I was saying before, you you just put the load the studs horizontally on your lift, right? And you I've done that for like up to 30 feet, uh, up to 30 foot stud. Okay, um, so yeah, you can literally just yeah go up halfway to the middle of the wall, right? And then you flip the stud in, right? Flip it around, and and, the, and there's a guy on the bottom who you know doesn't doesn't really necessarily have to catch it, right? He could just um, you can land it in the bottom track, and then he grabs it and puts it onto the center, right? While you while you center yours at the top track type thing. So and 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 if you're working alone. Right, you can still do it. Right, you just flip it around and land it in uh, in the bottom. But yeah, you see, Aaron is like seven feet tall himself. Okay, so you can tell how high up this uh, this wall is. Right, it was a real pain in the butt to um, to drywall. Uh, we suffered uh, injuries and all that. But yeah, look, see, look how high off the ground it is, man. Aaron is like six foot five or something like that, or six foot six or something stupid, or maybe bigger. I don't know. He's a tall guy. So um, yeah, that's a very high. Uh, concrete masonry unit wall there so unusual type of job man you don't really get this too often uh, this high off the ground it, it was very very difficult to drywall actually um, still recovering <laughs> 
But um, yeah, yeah, you just got to work together in a team, work in pairs. And um, it's nice to have, like I say, in three guys, right? Because uh, Lem's on the, the chop saw and we got everything all set up there for us. Uh, it's, uh, it's beautiful, right? So, yeah, I just, you basically go ahead, move your, you do put us one in, put two in. Um, and, you know, like I say, as, as many as you need for the lift. All right, here we are, guys. Um, the, the, the stud gets stuck in the track because the flange is so big, and so you just use a hammer to get it in there. Just bang that, bang it in there, get her in there, get her on center. And then, uh, yeah, check this out. The number 10, number 10 framing screws, I'm gonna pilot pre-drill with a 532, okay? 532. Yeah, so like I said, they're, they're, we're drilling with the 532. Number 10 wafer head screws are, they, they, you'll, you, you, you can't, the self drilling ends, uh, they're not gonna work because you're not drilling through two layers of steel on this slip track, right? You're only drawing, you're only drilling through the stud. So the, the driller is not, is always, you know, stripping, like not stripping it, but like slipping, slipping out. So you're going to go through like 10, 10 screws or a little small handful of screws every freaking stud, you know, trying to get them sunk. So solution, pre-drill them. And then my, the necessary, I wanted to show you how long it takes to drill. Could you imagine doing this with a self-drilling screw? Right? Like, yeah. And if you didn't hear me there, I always keep a handful of uh, screws in my hand, right? So I always keep a, oh my gosh, I always keep a handful of screws. I don't go into my pocket, my pouch for each one. But yeah, boom. See how easy they go in, right? This will speed, this speeds it up tenfold, man. And um, yeah, it's just like it takes a while to drill, right? It, it, it's the super heavy gauge, and the bottom track, yeah, you could totally pre-drill that too. But because it's going through two layers of steel, uh, it can it'll pilot through the the track, and then it's got a little bit of a guide to get through the stud. Well, up here there is the but you know by the time you get you get to the stud, you're just you know there's no there's no guide, so the whole the pre-drilling is is absolutely necessary. But, yeah, and if you guys have any other solutions, uh, if, uh, if you guys think I've missed anything or or whatnot, let me know down below. I want to hear from you guys. Make sure you guys uh, leave me a comment. It's uh, super awesome hearing from all you guys, and, uh, and, uh, and I really love getting into the, in, you know, into the discussions and hearing from everybody. It's just, it's, it's a great, man. Just make sure you guys leave me a comment down below. All right, now then I'm gonna go and load the and load the channel in the wall as we go. Yeah, so uh, channel, right? You just go in and put channel, right? So here we go, right? We're 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 going up and um, putting all our track in the whole way. That's another tip, guys. You want to track your entire run out. So this whole 130 foot wall, you can see that's that's the top, right? Um, so yeah, we're shooting every two feet, every two feet. But yeah, you want to go and put all your top track in. Okay, and then your studs, okay? Because when you're when you're putting all your track in, you're also measuring, all right? And this is just the backside of the stud. You square it, always square, clamp, and um, yeah, simple guys. Just pay attention to that, right? Oh, square everything. We square the top, we square the bottom. Uh, it, everything gets squared over, okay? You put your front side on the centers and you square it back, always, okay? Top and bottom, you square it over. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. So. Go get your track in and make your measurements along the way, right? So then you have your your third guy who's on the ground cutting behind, putting studs in, and yeah, by the time you got all your track in, you, you know your, your ground guy will have a bunch ready. So you go and start studying, and then he stays ahead of you with the cutting of studs. Okay, so it works out. It's just like I'm saying, it's a system. It's a uh, it, it, you know always do that. Always go and get all the track on, and get your measurements done. And boom, there she is. She's beautiful. Stay tuned. It's not over yet because I have the bulkhead coming right after this. You, you want to know this? this? Is the last part of this wall is understanding how the bulkhead works. Okay, and here we go. So I've shot angle at the top and bottom. Okay, this is uh, and and then I have a hat track at the very bottom. And the other way to do it is to you shoot angle at the top and bottom of the beam, okay? And that's to keep the insulation in the beam because all these beams have to be insulated. Uh, your alternative is to screw it to the Q deck, 
Okay, you can screw angle to the Q deck. You can drop an angle and then screw a f screw a front angle to your um, uh, you know to the bottom of your sheet. But yeah, you can see there, right? Screw hat track on the bottom, and th this drywall has to go slip in behind the hat track for that deflection. You got to keep your th uh, three quarter inch deflection. Uh, I hope you guys learned something here. I uh, really uh, man, I really enjoy doing these videos. I I just yeah, guys, just leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. And uh, if you have any questions, please ask. I'll always get back to you guys. And um, yeah, bye for now, everybody.